Hello, folks. All right. Um, welcome to the CNF working group. At least that's the current name. Uh, this group may get updated as far as the name goes as we do the transition um, into LFN. We're going to keep this going until um, another time or place are decided. And right now, I guess we'll probably keep with the same format as we've been doing. Uh, there's meeting notes that have been pasted in to the Zoom chat. You can put your name and add any agenda items. All right, I, I'm seeing some activity, but I'm not hearing it, anyone. I'm hoping audio's. We can hear you, we're being quiet. All right, great. All right, so this call is recorded. I probably noticed as you came in, uh, the CNF work group calls have been uploaded to YouTube. There's a playlist available for the calls. Um, and just please take note of that. There's also a calendar for the event. Right now it's on CNCFIO. Um, Lincoln, Oliver, we may want to move or add this meeting somewhere else and start managing it um, on a different calendar. We can update folks on where that would be. Uh, from the LFN side. Um, I think the mailing list probably isn't as big of an issue as far as migrating it over, but I think LFN folks, if there's a calendar, uh, a place to go look and then subscribe would be good. And also manage it. Uh, we can work with Taylor Wagner or someone else from CNCF as far as um, maybe shutting it down or redirecting people from the CNCF side? Yeah, I, I, on the calendar side, I think everything in LF land these days is through like LFX or whatever. Okay. Calendars, but that needs somebody from like the LF staff to help do it. I don't think the projects can push it up directly right now. Uh, all right. Um, so maybe take note of that for um, reaching out to someone there on the LF staff. I'm All happy, right. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. Uh, we can talk to Sandra. Thanks, Oliver. Upcoming events, um, Cloud Native Days in Guadalajara. CFPs, I guess, are closed. No, uh, sorry, January night. So they're still open for anyone that wants to do a North America uh, talk, this would be a good opportunity. Um, I'd spoken with the is some folks from is telecom at the 5G conference in Austin a couple of months ago. There seemed to be a lot of interest from them and some of the other um, telecoms with regard to cloud native and network automation and some other things. So there's, I think, some opportunities there. Um, the right now for KubeCon in Paris, EU in March, there is no cloud native telco day scheduled. If you're interested in that, then you should reach out to the events team as 
what LF events team and Ranny from LFN to express interest in having a co-located event at KubeCon. The, we had four and it seemed to keep increasing the interest and there seems to be a, a good, um, I guess, synergy between the idea of, you know, the transformation to cloud native and being there at the event, in addition to any other um, like networking telecom specific. So reach out now or soon if you're actually interested in seeing that happen. Um, I think telling people that you're interested and then you know getting sponsorship lined up is gonna be the only way something like that'll happen. Yeah, I think we should we should have this event. I think it's a it's a it's a useful thing to have. I'm just a bit stuck. Like if I if I indicate to Rani that we should have it, will we have it? Well, I think we need to have some kind of like a team who organizes it. If there's how a, is, a how is this going? So if there's a way to do it that I guess like a elephant way of organizing then we can do that, whatever that would look like. I'm not familiar with, um, even though I've been to a lot of LFN events, um, I, I'm not familiar with the organization side. No, no, but, but I'm asking, asking, like, how did it happen so far? Like, was it you who organized it or was it the CNCF team? Um, so we mainly worked, I guess there's a, there's a LF event team that got part of it going, but I mainly helped i guess on the some of the extra stuff i wasn't on the program committee so there's the program committee i think gerga yeah i think you've been on that yes but we and know I think most of the cat herding was done by lucina at least that's what i was was sensing let's say <laughs> to organize it like at least from the programming committee work yeah, I, I she did quite a bit. I don't know if Lucina, you're able to speak to it. She's writing some of this in. Um, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the no, current state. The CNCF did not approve the request. Mm, okay. So there's a program committee and and then like the co-chairs to help run that, but that's a little bit different from just saying, um, we're gonna make sure there's a program committee and whatever other reaching out to the people so i would say from the unofficially listening to help facilitate a whole lot of it uh, but mm -hmm. Lucina, do you have it more insight on the organization or is that something that we could gather maybe outside of this call hello um so this was done several months ago and Everyone who was on the Cloud Native Telco Day program committee would have gotten emails from me that um, had a shared Google form. We collaborated on the submission form for the co-located event for Cloud Native Telco Day. If people were interested in continuing being on the program committee, they put their names on the Google form and then all that information was sent over through the official co-located event submission form that was provided by CNCF. And uh, at this time, the Cloud Native Telco Day was not included in the program for KubeCon Europe. That's as uh, much information as I have. If That's KubeCon Europe, okay. And uh, <clears throat> so is there a way then to make it from elephant side? Or this like chance has been already gone so so i i don't think our chance is gone because it was actually pretty late when it got approved for north america and we were still able to do it i mean more fit work was required moving a little quicker but i think it's still possible it just needs to get approved and there have been both cncf project more specific co-located events but there's also stuff that i would say is more 
general, that would be the same sort of fit as what we're wanting. So a cloud native security con or, or day that's a co-located event, that's not specific to any project, although there were project days, co-located events as well. So I think a telco day would make sense. What I haven't seen is a collaboration between two LF orgs on an event like this within CNCF. But I think Lincoln, uh, maybe the, the one that I can think of would be one summit at Open Source Summit. It's I think it was a co-located event this year. Were you there, Gerge, for that one? There yeah, yeah that, uh, LFN organized a couple of uh, one summit. Um, uh, I don't know what was the correct title, but these mini summits. And there was one before the one summit Europe. And I think there was one also before uh, KubeCon Europe, maybe. All right. Well, um, it seems like we could look into what happened for that, but the main thing I would say, and we can look at what we'd need to organize uh, based on our experience with CNCF, and probably reach out to some of the folks to see what else would need to happen there. But the main thing is um, send a message to Rani and um, maybe Arpit as well, and then send something to the LF event team saying that you'd like to see one and express your interest. You could also ask, what do we need to do to have one? We have had some folks uh, say that they would be willing to sponsor the EU whenever it was for the North America and they were still up for it after that one happened. The more people ready to sponsor it when we say let's have it i think we'll make it a smoother process to get approval if it gets approved which the sooner we do it the more likely all right i'm gonna move on okay. um, one summit in may april may the if you y'all didn't anyone didn't see the CFPs got extended um, to December seventeenth, so if you're wanting to submit for that. Uh, you still have an opportunity. Is there anything else to say about this? The one summit. All right. If you have anything else, uh, please add it. We do have a few topics. Normally, we jump into the PR review because if we don't look at current issues or new issues, then we may miss them. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, looks like the only things here are the updates to the white papers. So for those that don't know, the the a new white paper was published last week. And that's just to show you all, that's this one. Um, this white paper. It's had a lot of updates and uh, feedback over the last several weeks from different folks. Um, this pull request here is the latest i'm going to skip this one for a moment this is a automated uh item that victor morales put in so i can check that in a minute so these are just some minor updates and mainly grammar and changes that some of them had gone into a different um a different area so we pulled them all in These are grammar items like this with the goal of inviting to invite. So for minor changes, and we, you know, we can look at how we're going to do this going forward, but 
the way that the working group has been working, minor changes that can be pulled in with um, without getting as many approvals to the pull request, but major updates or um, would want to have more. There's a governance and a, and a link to like doing updates um, to the different processes and stuff. That's normally like three for some and, and five, I think, is the common one for most things, especially major changes. Yeah, spelling and some other things. And then there's a little bit of reorganizing to uh, move references and stuff down. I'm not seeing any other changes, though, that it slipped in. Um, It looks like there may be, it's not letting me review it. Oh, there's a merge conflict. Okay, I'm not going to do that on this call. There's probably a, a change between the main branch and these updates that has already been merged in. So if... Folks want to take a look though outside of the call. Anytime there's a pull request, um, just you can add your update. Um, misspelling. This is a misspelling. This is just an update for the automated. Yeah, for the for the version of the. Uh, yeah, the review. All right. I'm gonna try to keep up with deleting so that the, we'll not end up with so many branches like we've had for a while. <clears throat> All right, so that's it. I'll work on this later, but if anyone can come in and, and do a review. Oh, it looks like it's going to work now. Have you had a chance, Nikolai, or anybody to look at this? Verbal, yes, looks good. Uh, yeah, I can I can approve it. It was mine. <clears throat> hey Victor. Have you had a chance to look at this one? Yeah, I think that I review it. Uh, it doesn't change the meaning. I mean it's fixing a lot of things. Um yeah, let me just approve it from what. All right. Sounds good. I'm going to move back into the other items then. Let me finish that. So, and it, uh, I feel like this, the moving stuff might take over. I'm going to, we, we could go longer, I should say. So, let me move that down. Oliver, that way we can talk more about it. And Lincoln, you may have input. Um, maybe the tack. I'm going to do a quick rearrangement. All right. So finish on the white paper. There's a blog post that we're getting ready. And right now there's one that was set to go to CNCF. I don't know what LFN wants to do, but Oliver... I think you heard from Randy that he was wanting to as well to do some type of post on the LinkedIn Lincoln if you have um an idea on that for PR and marketing for the cloud native telco related stuff that we're doing. But we'll probably have a a blog post out in the next few days from CNCF. And I've heard from the CSPs that they're planning to do one. Um, and we'll, we have something in the, the draft right now that's pointing to joining the working group and talking about the new LFN program that's coming together. There's no, uh, web page or anything to send them, but we do have a wiki page that Randy had created that then links to the resources and assets and a few of the other wiki pages we could send them there would that be 
a good idea or is, is there anywhere else that y'all think we should send them for any type of PR or marketing? Because it's going to bring I mean, a lot of eyes. I think the big thing would be, is there a way that we can get them engaged, right? So making sure that wherever we're sending them has like clear indication of here's how you get, you know, involved with the group of so desires. Here's how you join the meetings, you know, subscribe to the meeting calendar, mailing list, whatever. So, and it might even be worth making sure we kind of get some of that, those things sorted before you post the blog, right? Just to be able to capitalize on these things. And then, you know, the challenge is we're going to run right up against the holidays here and then the blog will get lost too over the holiday season. So I don't know what your timing is or anticipated timing is on some of those things. I, I think we're going to end up with, um, I guess, the PR marketing is going to just keep going. So we'll have this one go out in the next few days, like I said, and then maybe something following up from LFN after that can be scheduled, whatever. And we've already heard about a follow-up that's going to be talking about this white paper and some others that is in progress, but it'll be going out in January. So I, the idea then will be to keep the momentum going for talking about these things and pointing them. So if, if we have a new area, Lincoln, I think we can tie that in. Right now, we're keeping it a little bit more general. So one of them will be to this working group. And yes. for that, we can, we'll have the ability to update. So like these recurring meetings, if we get them here, and there's a few other areas, then we can always update this to point to the LFN calendar once we have the LF team um, helping us to move on to that platform and the LFX and anything else that we have. So we should be able to redirect them that way. Yeah, that's, we'll that's perfect. To... So I mean, mm -hmm. then I, I, I just would make sure that as the we're drafting the text of the blogs, like, the final thing kind of ends with like that call to action then. Yeah, that's what right? that's, like, what, that's know, right. Join join the group here, like details here. Right. I mean, I, I'm just wondering if if perhaps the to your point, I mean that you know, in terms of where do people go, Lincoln, maybe maybe we can use uh, you know on the wiki page can't we just create a, an additional page that sort of fronts that asset sort of list? And um, I, I forget the two, you know, the two main areas that are under what uh, Randy created. I think there's an asset list and there is a challenges to be solved list, but there's, you know, on that head page there, cloud native telco, I mean, it has workshop, but maybe we could sort of put a little bit of color on that one to basically say, you know, the, the group, you know, for anyone who's interested, I'm, that's probably what we can do. That's probably the easiest way. It's just to sort of direct people to that for now. And we know we can basically say, where is this meeting? What's the frequency? And that, you know, this is work in progress to move it over to LFN, but we don't yet have a an LFN set up, you know, something like that. That might be the easiest way to do that, just so people don't get lost in where they're supposed to go. That sounds good. Um, having linking between the different areas, just making sure it, we keep mentioning the same thing. We yeah. can do that as well. So here, here's just the end of uh, the draft. It's some something like this. So yeah. number one, calling to the new program and then the meet, the CNF working group meeting that we're on right now. Yeah. So between those, I think we'll get some eyes somewhere where we can follow up and then we can update this. It, right now, we don't have anything that's pointing back to the working group. Um, so as long as we have all of them pointing and talking about each other, I think we'll be fine. And then we can add more detailed or specific information to new um, blog posts or announcements or whatever else. All right, um, reach out to you, Oliver, maybe 
after this call this week and make sure we have some of the same messaging on all those pages. Uh, That's good. <clears throat> okay. Oliver, uh, do you want to give a recap? I don't know who added this, but um, a recap of the Elephant TAC meeting. Is there anything here? I mean, some folks may have already been on that that meeting um, last week. Yeah. Um, well, feel free to, you know, I think there were, there were a number of people on the call um, that are here today as well. So feel free to add any things I missed. But I, I think the main thing was, is, um, we're basically at a point where the the initiative have has of course been announced um, both at Cloud Native Toco Day and then also uh, there were discussions at the last uh, DNTF. Um, so really, the the next step is turn in terms of trying to operationalize this in LFN and and so Ranny had um, spoken with Kenny Paul um, and one of the first things was really the the TAC meeting last week where. In my mind, it wasn't necessarily prepared as a, you know, here's what the initiative seeks to do, or this is what it is, this is what it seeks to do. I think there was, um, it was rather just a kind of open conversation to start with in terms of um, there's a new initiative, there's still things that need to be resolved. And so they want the community to continue to discuss it and figure out what the right, right approach is for, for the new initiative um, and ask that we update the the TAC, um, and I I offered basically to say, okay, well, why don't we start with a a proposal? What what has actually been proposed? What you know, what areas are are unclear or need further discussions? So uh, I am in the process of trying to put that together. But again, this is a community effort, so um, I think the as it if you can scroll down just a little bit i'm just or up or down i'm just trying uh i'm just trying to see where that point was yeah so i think what we um said we would do is we would put together a proposal basically you know proposal slash status where are we and i think you know we can start with <laughs> we're still over in cncf we don't really have a place within elephant to start carrying out these meetings there's a lot of unknowns at the moment um and one thought was to prepare a draft and present it next week uh, in this meeting so that we can get as much uh, community feedback and input um, in terms of your understanding, in terms of your thoughts. Uh, so we capture that and then we will essentially, the plan is to present that to the TAC on the 10th of January um, as this is, you know, this is a status, this is what, you know, those of us have been working on think that it's about and how it's positioned within LFN. Uh, and then of course we will have discussions on that. So that's the thinking right now. So ideally we could use a, a large part of next Monday to go through that proposal and get you know input. And of course, if anyone wants to help out, you know, it's just to reach out to either Taylor, Lucina, or myself. Um, I'm just basically trying to put together sort of 10 slides or less that are going to articulate what you know what has been discussed so far and sort of what the next steps we think should be all right yeah, I, I know that um, uh, the, there's a little, uh, already a lot of description of all the challenges. Uh, I think it would be still interesting to really discuss the interesting, I mean, the challenges and what the perception of this uh, uh, merger sort is going to help, how, how it's going to help. Yeah. And I, I think, I think you're spot on, Victor. I think one of the things we need to do is work to, to address, you know, I mean, to articulate how we think this new initiative can help with those challenges. And, and I think that's, that is the, I think that's a little bit of the benefit of getting to do this and present it again and say, this is what we think it is. This is how we think it helps. Um, 
And of course, there'll be differences of opinion. So we need to, I think the more clear we are and what we think it is, then it's easier for people to comment. Because if we just say it's a cloud native initiative, then I, you know, it can it mean that means many different things to different people. Do we want to go into, do we want to talk about that today or is there anything else? It's not listed, but um, you're speaking to it right now. Talk about the challenges or asset list, the time remaining. Yes, I don't know about the others. All right. Um, before we jump into those, um, is it could take up the rest of the time. I, I would like to get feedback especially from folks that may need to drop soon for the year-end schedule. So we'll be canceling the for the 25th, of course. Um, the first, usually, uh, New Year, so that these two meetings won't be happening. So next week, uh, the 18th, will be the last meeting of 2023. Um Anything for the 8th? Do we just want to keep the same place and time for now? I think that would make sense. And I, you know, I, I would guess that, you know, we will have some, you know, hopefully we'll have a good discussion both today and also next week um, once we have some some slides to, to share and sort of put thoughts down a little bit more on paper. Um, we might be able to use that 8th as a, you know, a, Feed, feedback's been received and see if we can how much we can address you know obviously it's going to be over the holidays so there may be some work that remains but ideally what we're presenting at the TAC is has got as much community input as possible and that for now is this this group here all right um i suggest that we keep it even if we get some new information like the LF event team setting up calendar and other things because some people have already communicated they won't be available starting next week so they may not be on the call and they may not be back with all the others canceled so that way at least folks that find stuff now will be able to find us on the 8th and then if we're if we have somewhere to move we need to move or whatever else then we move after the eighth. Uh, any objections to that? No. Okay. I'm just going to put yes. Okay, so we'll keep it. All right. Um, Uh, just Taylor, uh, yeah. I think Nicole and I uh, just approved the, the PR. So I don't know if you want to merge it or maybe you can merge it offline here. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I couldn't understand. You realized what? Oh, the the the, the PR uh, that with the small changes. Uh, uh -huh. You got to, to approved. So you said like uh, given that it's just minor changes on, on the grammar and few things, I guess. Uh -huh. I guess that we can merge it now, or like maybe you can also do it offline if you prefer. All right. Yeah, I'll I'll open that up again. Um, I'd like to hand the screen share over to uh, maybe Oliver if, if you're available. As we go back and talk about the challenges, okay, uh, going into the challenges and asset list. All right. Are you up uh, for that? Yeah. All right. And that yeah. way we can, you know, if we want to can continue the discussion on this, it sounded like Victor, Lou, you had some um, more interest in the challenges and then Gerge as well. Yeah, I'm going to share here. Just give me a sec. Okay. Uh, I'm going to stop my screen. Share. There you go. Um somebody needs to give me permissions to share. Uh, there we go. 
All right. You see my screen now? Looks good. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So did we want to start on challenges? Um, okay. Um, does anybody want to, I don't know if you, I wasn't, I'm not sure if you wanted us to walk through this or if people had comments that they wanted to just bring up having read this. So this was of course in the reference, we've made this reference several times now, both the manifesto, the NGMN manifesto, and then followed by the latest white paper. Yeah, my um, understanding, the, the, it's it's pretty much the same problem every, every industry face, right? So it's just moving away from monoliths, and um, the problem is there's so many different products with using technology from different kind of ages, right? From from virtual machine to uh, to containers, etc. So there's a, just a problem to make them work together. Um, so, but that's not going to change even with all those projects that's talked about the silver and the um, Sylvia, or the the uh, uh, what uh, no kid? I don't pronounce it right. So like, even with all those projects, those are just the the current state. They're going to evolve again. So how is going to the CNF projects going to help um, making that easier the transition? Yeah, basically that's well. That's that was the original <clears throat> question here. That what kind of problem do we want to solve? Like, is it um, like making it easier to integrate the platforms in the CNFs, or is it making the CNFs nice, early following cloud native principles, or making them uh, easy to manage, or all of these? <clears throat> that's the that's why we created this page to collect um, what problem we would like to solve in with these projects. And of course, these are all overlap a bit. That's the beauty of it. And what Silva is trying to do is that they are creating a very open-ended stack. Like they say that if your CNF is not able to run on Silva, then, then your CNF is not compliant with, with Silva. And that is one way to specify the stack. It's a very concrete way to to specify uh, the properties of a, of a platform to build the platform and and, and require that to um, to and require the CNF to run on that platform. But that is also for me. It's an in, like even the existence of Silva is an indication that at the moment there is no generic stack. Like uh, you cannot have uh, non-opinionated stacks. And that is because Kubernetes miss, misses some like features or properties to, to run Taco workloads. And that is also coming from the fact that Kubernetes itself is like a pluggable framework. Like you have to, select the container runtime, you have to select whatever storage framework, networking, and all of these things. And all of the all all of your choice sources are are giving you whatever different runtime capabilities. And that that led to this prevalidation problem, for example. Basically, I think if I understand correctly, um, the goal is to uh, first start with the opinionated uh, stack, right? Just as what Steven did. Then eventually from that experience, uh, create uh, patterns and interoperabilities, API standard, et cetera. Um, that's going to be able to be more, more generic for future um, kind of non-opinionated stacks. Is that correct? Well, I don't know if that can be set as a, as a goal today, because Silva is one one implementation, but other operators who are not part of the Silver Group are using different 
implementations. And I doubt that all Kubernetes distros running telco workloads will be based on the Silva stack ever. So I think we need something a bit more loose than than the Silva approach. At least that's my personal opinion. So I, I just wanna to hijack a little bit. Um, so I guess in this particular case, what what we have here is is just talking about the challenges. I guess uh, I mean it's it's great to to have like a multiple solutions, but but I guess that the first thing that and and something that I start thinking about it is um, so we have to define the problem statement. Like what, what are the things that we are challenged uh, or what are the problems that we are facing right now? Uh, once that we define, we, we have clearly defined the, the problem or the challenges in this case. Maybe from that point we can start like proposing solution because if we try to just quickly solve the problem, but I guess we, we didn't have a chance to to analyze it and and and, and try to limit the, the, the solution. I mean, uh, I like the way that this document describes things. Um, as long as we are describing the problem not as, as a way to provide a solution for, for a problem. So yeah, I know that we, we have Silva and other like initiatives which are trying to solve in these particular problems, but um, I, I would like to just jump in the solution because um, mm -hmm. I guess in, in that way we can just um, uh, maybe omit or like assume certain things. So, so one of the things that I, I was also thinking about it is like um, uh, one of the things that we have uh, uh, constantly changed is the way to develop applications. Uh, initially, we have like a more predictability. Uh, for example, the infrastructure, the, the scenarios. Uh, we didn't have like a chaos engineer at <laughs> the time. We're like we, we didn't have to do, do those things, and we were relying too much in testing. Now, so now we are like facing a, a new area uh, where uh, where we have applications we where are going to be deployed in certain places with, where you don't know, have control over the infrastructure or even the way that the application is running. So that's why, um, yeah, it's a, it's a it's a new it's a new way to deploy things, <laughs> and we have to accept the fact that this is going to happen. So. Yeah, that's guess... the, yeah, that's that's one of the issues, but I don't really get like we have to accept the fact that we don't control the infrastructure on one side, which is okay, but on the other side, we are expected to deliver, which means that mm -hmm. we have to control the infrastructure because that you know that gives us the CPU cycles and the packets. So how a CNF supposed to they will deliver if it cannot get if if it cannot have any assumptions from the infrastructure. Then we can then then we have to also accept that you cannot have any assumptions about assumptions about the working of the CNF. Yeah, yeah, that's that's my point. I, I mean, we can we can try to force the 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 um, infra providers to stick to certain. Uh, offerings like, like or, or we can also force the NF vendors to say, well, you have to do all this testing or all this validation. I mean, I think that there are two approaches. This one is try to inform them to, to do certain things, or the other approach could be like just accepting the fact that this is not going to happen and the, 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 it is a new way to that that you have to prepare for the uncertainty and and and. And 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 that's and you have to be prepared for that one. I mean, not not trying to force them to, to comply with certain rules or certain things. Because I, I remember that reading in this particular document, they were saying like, okay, well, we have to enforce that the CN, uh, then a vendor has to test it or to validate their application at least six months of the. Uh, Kubernetes or something like that. So I don't know if that is doable. I don't know if we can. I mean, we can we can propose that that's why we're here. Like, but but given the fact that things are changing so fast, 
um, I'm not sure if it makes makes sense to still keep important to, to to do that in that way. Many of these uh, challenges is, um, at least my understanding is, it's kind of apply not only to telecom. It's kind of universal. Any cloud native uh, implementation will have. So does it? So now now that it is, in a way, the RF networking is sort of a kind of different world from uh, CNCF. At least to me, they they don't have a, you know they need some special uh, email to even log into their Slack. So that. So this 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 concerns uh, how what's what's a more effective way to resolve this problem to even identify the problem should that be done in a CNCF level or is more or collaboration between CNCF and, and RF networking or just VZ networking just just between the the, the networking um, projects yeah that's that's exactly my point like uh, I mean um, that's true Victor. Um, for example, uh, we now like a new kind of applications, the uh, LLM applications, which are very hard to test them because you don't have that predictability in, in terms of, like the results. And I guess eventually the new era of all the new applications are going to follow in the same category, like not providing the level of predictability. So so that's my point. I mean, probably more like the kind of grown. But but I feel like trying to enforce them and to 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 provide certain level of productivity from both parties, like from the NF and, and infrastructure, could be could, could be uh, I don't know, it's, it's something idealistic or ideal, but it probably in, in it's, it's not the trend or it's not for the industry is going. I don't know. Yes, first of all, I don't know uh, if the if this list of things which are listed in the page, like this prevalidation and and all of that, like are these the are these in problem domain or solution domain? Because they still, I think, try to solve something. All right. So those I. I put that in there, so I'll speak to it. These are copied out of the CSP accelerating cloud native white paper. That I, if you scroll to the top, by the way, I added a couple of other things. So there's the link to that. But those um, quotes right above it, I think, are important to this, Gurke. This was updated based on discussions back and forth with several vendors on the white paper to try to be more explicit that the CSPs understand they've they're they've had requirements including SLAs that then the vendors have to meet so if if there's new requirements that don't have an environment that actually allow them to be met then it makes you know it it wouldn't be fair to vendors it doesn't make any sense it's going to be a failure and that's been acknowledged. It was already implicit based on everybody that's been involved. Um, TELUS writing up this uh, area, Vodafone, um, Orange, Deutsche Telekom, a bunch of different people that are putting these in here. They're all saying, yes, we can't just say vendors do all these things, but not try to have the environment. That includes having a more... Um, interoperable set of systems that you can go on. Yes, there are going to be some specific things per environment, but they're all trying to go towards essentially, and you can see this in like a cloud native uh, infrastructure book. I've seen it, but they've communicated this in a lot of different ways. Some type of cloud native layer that sits between it and the actual infrastructure layer um, for a lot of people, this would be a SaaS model. So you may be on OpenShift or AWS, the EKS or whatever. So lots of different Kubernetes environment, and then some layer between it that's providing, here is the what looks like the infrastructure, 
that the would be running in production for the these telecom environments that layer is what they're focused on for the what quote unquote platform and they're wanting to build that out and they're focused on that right now so you see production launches right now that are moving towards that and they're wanting to to work hand in hand on that so that's why i put the quote here that they're going to be adjusting they're going to be adjusting what those requirements and sla are, are so that you're not going to think hey wait we can't do this performance thing if we just throw it into we we can meet your you know interoperability thing here but then our performance drops so they realize that and they're going to have to change what's what they're requiring from you whenever they're saying to come into these environments okay so let me just reiterate on that if i got it right so you say that operators are building kind of an obstruction layer to provide a homogeneously looking uh, platform view for the CNS and they are releasing this in production already. Is this correct? Because I never, I didn't hear anything like that. So if you have any more references, I would be very happy to learn more about this. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm trying to find the, this is, okay, this is probably a good one. Uh, this book that I referenced. We need to add, prob- I think we should probably add some diagrams into the white paper that are talking about the different things here. Um, the book isn't going to help a lot, Oliver, until I get you to the right spot in it i'm trying to find the the diagram that at least gives a very high level of what i'm referring to okay there's a written version of it in the updated okay it's on page And I'm going to put, I'm just going to paste, paste that into the book, uh, into the um, web page. I need to reference the book, though, if I'm going to do that. Ugh. PDFs are frustrating. All right. So let's see. Do you have it up? Yeah, you do. So this would be the general idea that I'm hearing um, from the CSPs that are pushing for this type of adoption. There's, I mean, okay, so it, it says in this book, and I've heard it, independently from a a lot of different people say this but just to keep it in mind everybody needs to look at whatever their problem is and then you're going to decide if something is the right solution so that's the same thing when you're looking at cloud native technology and best practices and stuff if it doesn't if it's not a good fit then you're not going to pick it that's fine when you say you do think it's a a good fit then what we're trying to do is help with picking those best practices all right so now you're going down this path so this is the idea of what you would do on the different layers and they are saying this from what i'm hearing the csps is they're wanting to eventually approach all layers and there are projects that are actually looking at the automation side from a cloud, how would you do automation cloud native point of view for stuff like compute, storage, networking? So the underlying infrastructure layer and then the infrastructure service. But what we're really talking about right now is those top two layers. So applications, the workloads, I think we've all pretty much understand what we're saying for that for telecom. This cloud native infrastructure to the infrastructure as a service that's what 
the layer that I'm referring to, Gergay. And mm -hmm. I know Deutsche Telekom is already doing the automation for the infrastructure for themselves. They already have it on bare metal. They, they're they doing their own thing. And maybe at some point they'll say, hey, we'll work with the rest of you know, the, the open community and provide that. But I'm not looking at that today. I know that um, Equinix has some stuff, projects like Tinkerbell for doing some of the automation of infrastructure. But again, we're not talking about that. If there is some layer, the point is to try to talk to that. And if you're looking at a cloud provider, then there's definitely a layer. If you're building your own, then you need to think about it. But have something where it's abstracted and you say this is your the environment that we want the application to think about we don't want the applications to worry about the underlying pieces as much as possible they may want high performance they want may want multiple network connection points but that should all be requested you know using cloud native practices the declarative configurations and stuff. Does this make sense, Gergay? Absolutely. I'm just wondering when we will have this. So we're, st we're starting to have it already. Like I said, Deutsche Telekom is doing it. I think that TELUS has some of their stuff doing this from what I'm hearing. Um, at least they're doing a little bit of it some of their network functions are actually deploying on AWS in a complementary type of manner. And I've heard a little bit from Orange on this, but only in some areas. All of those Orange, Deutsche Telekom and stuff, you know, they have a lot of different groups and stuff. They're, yeah, exactly. Uh, and that's that's my worry. So this is how we are creating all of these open related stacks. Because everybody's doing their own stuff. Absolutely. So we can't solve them all at once. And even if we said, hey, let's just, we know that they're all going to be on different things. So let's just make sure that we work well on that. It's going to, whatever we do is there, we're not going to change everything today. So what we're talking about here is for the groups that are already starting to do this. So Vodafone has a lot of the infrastructure automation stuff. I know they have a whole cloud group. So there's, I know there will be some type of um, collaboration between them. And then if you look at, say, for Deutsche Telekom, they have their own thing, but there's a lot of people that are working more on, I think, the match here for this top layer. And what we're trying to do with this program, this new program, would work with people that are running in public cloud environments. So now we're saying, what is the cloud native infrastructure telecom layer that we would like? That could be aiming towards that more interoperable across environments. I actually had a question, uh, like I think I found the answer. Uh, is like if in CNCF we're talking about containers and when will the public cloud providers rewrite their public cloud using just containers without virtual machine? And uh, I, I think I got my answer that is that um, the answer is depends. Um, I know for the edge you can you know have pure containers on bare metal, whereas for uh, you know for public cloud providers because they're doing multi-tenancy and et cetera. So um, virtual machine is something that you just cannot live without. So that's why you know you, you won't expect the public cloud provider to um, you know rewrite their public cloud with just containers. And the same thing applies to the infrastructure, the service here. I don't know what they're doing right now. Uh, most likely it will be sort of like OpenStack and you know, VMware sort of virtual machine level, uh, especially if they're talking about multi-tenancy. I mean, I, and more, more about resource management, actually. I, I think it's more of a longer term. We can look to longer term goals and then know that things are going to change along the way, including our long-term goals may completely change. So what, where do we want? And there'll be multiple goals. So you're picking a goal. And then if we're moving towards that, 
I don't think we're going to ever get all the providers move over to containers and then we say, we're done. There probably will be, before you could move them, before you'd get agreement, <laughs> and then definitely before it actually happened, we're going to have some new technology. So trying to move forward in some area. So what I would say would be, if you think that using the properties of cloud native technology and practices, which is really what we're talking about. So is the application and the environment to, to design to work and act natively in that environment? So it was created not to just run in it, but actually respond and behave for that environment specifically. If you're wanting that, now we can say, well, who is interested and what can they do? So we already know that some providers are trying to do that for telecom. So Microsoft has um, the Azure for operators, but that doesn't mean that they're, they're taking on all the qualities that we want, but they do have an interest. So they're trying to do hyperscaler general stuff. They're also trying to do telecom requirement stuff, including, I know that they have a whole group that's doing um, some secure computing stuff that's a good match for the EU specific requirements. And what we can do is try to reach out to any of them that seem more interested in working and try to get them on board to discuss those type of requirements, Victor. Uh, hey, we're at the top of the hour. I do want to make sure that we respect everybody's time. I'm just realizing. Um, Oliver, do anything else shut before we shut down? Uh, no, I think I think just you know feel free. Um, we'll work a little bit on this uh, during the week, trying to you know again I. I I see just from this conversation, there's still a lot of things to discuss. So, uh, you know, if you're interested in helping out or if you've got some time, feel free to reach out to, again, either myself, Taylor or Lucina. Um, we don't have anything booked, but, you know, we're, you know, we probably will meet once this week just to kind of discuss um, material that we're preparing for next Monday, uh, where we can hopefully start talking a little bit about what the initiative, how the initiative can help. Sounds good. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thanks.